Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this edition of the Ferrier Live Blog, uh, Ferrier Law Group Live Blog, I should say. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to jump on real quick because I'm in between a couple of missions here. Um, I really just wanted to jump on and really just talk about an article I read um, that prompted me to do some looking. But it looks like uh, there's a lot of smoke and fire, I guess, out there around the McGregor uh, Mayweather fight that might be coming up. Um, I read an article by a guy named Connolly in Forbes who has said that he put out a, a pathway that this might be the first uh, billion dollar uh, fight or billion dollar purse really attached to any kind of sporting event. And it's kind of it's kind of far fetched. Um, a lot of things will have to come into play. Um, you know, it might be a little slim in terms of, of how they can pull this off. But he laid out a pathway for it to work. Um, one, the gate. Obviously, um, and Floyd will probably have to open himself up uh, to have this fight not be in Vegas. Uh, if they were to bring it out here to Arlington, to AT&T Stadium, where the Cowboys play, uh, that gate would be huge. If they if they happen to put it in a MetLife uh, Stadium, depending on when uh, the fight took place, um, you know, weather permitting, um, obviously those gate draws will be huge. Um, the ticket prices probably wouldn't be as high as you could get in Vegas. Um, the, the Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao fight, for example, I think tickets were up to around $5,000 a ticket. So you wouldn't be able to get tickets that high, but you'd obviously be able to get volume. Um, so the gate numbers would we'll have to be huge. Uh, Pay-per-view um, from the U.S. market, uh, given that um, uh, they probably, they generated over $500 million in pay-per-view um, during the Manny, Manny Pacquiao uh, for a Mayweather fight, that would be huge. Um, you know, and they could probably up the prices too. They could probably get away with charging folks $129, $149 for that fight, and folks would get it. Um, giving the MMA fans, the boxing fans, and the folks who would love to just see the spectacle, um, all those folks combined would probably uh, push them up well past what, what Manny and Floyd were able to do. And then lastly, uh, promotions and merchandise. Um, that those uh, those items as well. Um, so those are the three areas that that um, you know are the the mainstays. What I really want, what really caught my attention, um, again, the, the, you know, I'm a sports and entertainment attorney here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I'm also a business and corporate attorney. And what really caught my attention is that you know that number is so huge, regardless of where it ends up, whether it becomes a billion or not, um, with the global pay per views and the you know again the gate and the merchandise. Um, the other market that folks, you know, tend not to pay attention to is what I would probably call the secondary market. Um, these are the restaurants, the sports bars, you know, the nightclubs. And again, my hearts and prayer go out to the folks who were um, caught up in that, that senseless shooting in Cincinnati. New Orleans is my home, but Cincinnati will always have a special place in my heart. So my hearts and prayers go out to those folks. But um, nightclubs, sports, sports clubs, sports bars. Um, all those places are, are going to, you know, they're going to make a killing as well. And so that got me to thinking, um, you know, a couple of things. One, a billion dollars is a lot of money, right? And, and folks can take the attitude that why are we in this day and age in this society spending that much money on a sporting event to watch two people? That's one way we could look at it. Um, the other way we could look at it is that the genie's out of the bottle. The train is rolling down the tracks. We either jump on that train wave as it goes past, or we try to stand in front of it and get rolled over. Um, there's a lot of money that's going to be made, whether this fight generates a billion or not. And so why can't um, enterprising and entrepreneurial folks jump in on that? Again, restaurants, uh, hotels, uh, movie theaters. I think the last fight I saw for Floyd, well, one of, the, one of the first fights I saw for Floyd in the movie theater was the uh, Ortiz fight. Um, I saw that in the movie theater. The movie theater was packed, and they showed it on two different screens. And we paid 25 bucks a ticket to go see that. Um, uh, and uh, if Floyd, like I said, if Floyd was open to it, he doesn't fight outside of Vegas. If he was open to it, he could go to, uh, thanks, DeAndre, for jumping on. Um, if Floyd was open to it, um, you know, that gate would be huge. But let's say the, the fight came here to Texas, you know, outside of Fight City. Um, it came to Arlington, Texas. All kinds of people would be able to make money. Um, caterers for, you know, the fight parties. They could start, you know, promoting once that fight is dropped, uh, once the announcement is made, um, they can start planning, you know, uh, fight party package deals for folks. Um, you know, obviously folks are going to be hustling with Lyft, 
and hustling with um, with Uber, folks, more entrepreneurial people can start their own kind of ride sharing thing. Um, it might not have the app, right? You might not be able to launch the app in time, but you can certainly do it old school. You can go to different places and cut deals, different sports bars, different re hotels, different restaurants, and start your own kind of thing. Everybody's got a cell phone, and you can just do it old school like that. Um, you know, in, in terms of the fight parties themselves, the caterers um, would be, you know, would be in demand. And certainly people like handy women and men who know how to hang TVs and that kind of thing, they can start, you know, advertising, you know, the big fights coming, you know, get your TV hung up, you know, that those kind of deals and specials. And I'm just kind of thinking outside of the box, certainly party planners, event planners. Um, there's a lot of venue space that's not being used. Uh, promoters, you know, all those folks can start getting people to fill up those spaces. You know, it doesn't always have to be the fighters themselves and the same folks who are, you know, spread, uh, spreading that billion dollars around in their circles. Other entrepreneurial type people. Um, can jump in on this. Uh, this is going to be huge. Um, and you just have to think of a way to, to let your brand connect to a service that you can see jumping in. But like I said, I can certainly see caterers, handymen, um, certainly the folks who would be driving, folks designated drivers, um, you know, all those folks can get paid. And then, you know, other folks who are, are thinking along those lines. Um, for nightclub promoters, obviously, or nightclub owners, you guys might want to consider uh, hanging some TVs up in your place if you don't have any, creating and carving out some more space. Um, these are some of the ideas. So, again, I think the fight's going to happen. I think it's going to jump off. Um, absolutely, uh, DeAndre said. Uh, they can even bootleg like folks in Louisville during the Derby. Yeah, I mean, you know, folks, especially if they're not in the Vegas area, um, you know, they can uh, get rental properties and rent them out for a month and turn them into a bed and breakfast or – you know, a hangover spot. I mean, you could think about all kind of ways to jump in on this. And yeah, a billion dollars would, would, would do a lot of things, right? We could, we could, as a society, we could better spend a billion dollars on the Flint water crisis. Certainly, um, we could put up uh, business incubators like all over the, all over the country. But if folks are going to make this money, somebody's going to make this money. Uh, enterprising entrepreneurs need to be the ones who figure out how they get a, a cut in a piece of the pie too. Um, in terms of the fight itself, you know, I, I that's kind of say this for last. Um, I, you know, I think it's taking on a WWE kind of quality to me. That's just to me personally. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fight fan. I'm a budding, uh, injury prone, uh, BJJ hobbyist. Shout out to all American MMA and BJJ, my folks. And again, shout out to DeAndre Thompson for jumping in. I appreciate it, man. Um, so to me, you know, I, I don't think. Um, Conor McGregor has any business whatsoever jumping in the ring uh, with Floyd, Money Mayweather. Um, Floyd's been boxing since, what, the late 80s. Won his first title in, what, 97, 98. Has been going strong and undefeated ever since. Floyd Mayweather's an, a, a magnificent striker. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Um, you know, he, and he certainly would be able, and he, he certainly would be able to, to, to handle Floyd in the MMA match. And Floyd has no business jumping in the cage with with uh, Conor McGregor, just like McGregor has no business jumping in the ring with Floyd. Folks who might disagree, I would just invite y'all to do two things. One, go check out, go Google, um, uh, type in Google McGregor sparring, and you'll see a three or four minute clip that will show you everything you need to know about why I said what I just said. And then also just go remind the first take with Nathan Diaz, those jabs he took. Uh, those jabs he was eating off for 10 days notice, I mean, no. This, so this is, to me, this is an event. Right. This is kind of like Floyd's last stand, Floyd's last chance to to earn a hundred million dollars a night. Um, but if, if they're going to make a billion dollars, you know, uh, we need to figure out ways to jump in on that. And so if, if you're thinking about, um, you know, getting your business entity ready for that, getting informed. Right. Obviously, we can help you guys with that. Um, but right now, it's all about trying to figure out how to how to spread that pie. Um, <laughs> and, and my man DeAndre is breaking it down for me. Uh, General Hernandez in '88 was uh, Floyd's first title fight, coming from DeAndre. Uh, that brother knows his sports business. So, um, if anybody has any questions or, or any disagreements, um, you know, by all means, let's let's keep this conversation going. But again, if this fight is jumping off, we need to figure out how to spread the love in terms of, of getting in on some of the action. Um, I think that's about it. I don't see any other questions. 
Um, I appreciate y'all jumping on with me. Um, man, let's keep this conversation going, y'all. Take it easy.